Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we found an equation that described the radius of the n orbit in the Bohr atom. But in addition to that, we can now also find the velocity of an electron in any of the orbits. We found that the velocity of the nth orbit was equal to the square root of a over m times r sub n, where r sub n was the radius that we found in the previous video. a, of course, is equal to kq1 times q2, m is the mass of the electron, and r sub n is the radius of the nth orbit. So let's try to find the velocity of an electron in the nth orbit, and then ultimately when n equals 1, the innermost orbit. So when we plug r sub n in here, we get v sub n is equal to the square root of a divided by m times r sub n, which is equal to this. So it would be n squared, h squared, and it, everything in the denominator goes to the numerator. That would be 4 pi square m times a. Now notice that the mass cancels out. And we end up with a squared, 4 pi squared. Everything is squared now. So we have in the numerator, we have 4 pi squared a squared divided by, in the denominator, we get n squared times h squared, h being the Planck's constant. So v sub n is equal to, when we take the square root of that, we get 2 pi a divided by n times h. So now let's say we want to find the velocity when n equals 1, and we're going to plug in for a what a is equal to, which is kq1, q2. So velocity in the first orbit is equal to, well, first of all, let's go ahead and box that because that's the velocity for any of the orbits, but for the first orbit we get 2 pi times a, and a would be kq1 q2 all divided by n, which is now 1, times h, which is 6. Well, we'll just write h because we'll plug in the values later. There we go. And now when we plug in the values, we get the velocity of the electron in the first orbit to be 2 pi times k, which is, uh, where? there we go, 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared per coulomb squared times q1 times q2, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and we have to square that, so coulomb squared cancels out, and we divide everything by 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Now a joule is a newton meter, so newton meter times seconds. So newton cancels out, uh, then we end up with meters per second. So v1 is equal to Let's find out what the velocity is of an electron in the innermost orbit. So we get 2 times pi times 9e e to the 9th times 1.6e e to the 19 minus squared divided by 6.626e e to the 34 minus equals, that would be 2.18 times 10 to the 6th meters per second which is approximately equal to about, oh, I would say about 70, uh, not 70 percent, but a little less than 1 percent, or 0.0, I'm not converting it correctly, let me try one more time, a little bit less than 1 percent, so about 0.7 percent of the speed of light c. So the electron in the innermost orbit of the Oort atom travels at slightly less than 1% of the speed of light, or 2 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. To put that in perspective, that would be about 2,000 kilometers per second, or roughly about, about 11, 1,200, 1,300, about 1,300 miles per second. So that would be about 2,180 kilometers per second and convert it to miles, that would be about 16, that would be about 1,400, that's approximately 1,400 miles per second. Just to put things in perspective, that's pretty quick for that electron, but that's about how fast electrons travel in the innermost orbit of the Bohr atom, and that is how it's done.